Hello everyone, welcome to my ability stalling guide. There are a few out there, but this has been requested and asked a number of times. This guide is going to cover how to stall abilities and some examples where they're commonly used or have been used in speed kills. So what is stalling ability? Stalling ability pretty much is what it sounds like. It is using an ability, but not allowing it to deal damage before then releasing it at a later point or on a different target. This leads into the two main topics I'm going to cover, which are stalling the ability and then releasing the ability. Firstly, stalling. The basic idea of stalling ability is to use an ability out of your attack range. Generally, this means clicking the ground just after using the ability to stop your character from walking in. The ability will go on cooldown at this point and the adrenaline your ability loses or gains is also calculated at this point. Almost every ability can be stalled, although some abilities which are channels like Snipe or Asphyxiate can't. So if I wanted to stall something like Decimate, I can run away from the dummy, press my decimate ability while clicking the ground, and now that ability is stalled. Running far away isn't always practical in a PBM scenario for major range as they have a longer attack range, so equipping an offhand melee weapon can allow you to stall abilities the same way you would with melee. This does obviously mean that you can't stall abilities such as Needle Strike with a melee weapon equipped. Abilities can continue to be stalled indefinitely unless you either drop combat or use another ability. The exception to this is Blader Dive, which can be used after stalling ability and won't cancel, but things such as Sigils will cancel the stall ability, as they now count as abilities. The second thing to talk about is releasing our ability. Stalling ability in most cases is pointless if you don't release it. To release our ability, the easiest way is by clicking on the target we have. When we click on a target, this tries to force an auto, but instead of releasing an auto, our stalled ability is released instead. This means I can either click on the target to release my stalled ability or click my auto to release the ability. Clicking isn't commonly used though as it has some limitations. Firstly, if you want to use the stalled ability on a different target than the one you stalled it on, you need to use an auto or debuff spell to release it as clicking won't work. Secondly, if you just click the target, you can't use another ability the same tick as you release your stalled ability but using a spell allows you to do that. Because when we're meleeing or ranging, we can't use a mage auto, we have to use a debuff spell such as vulnerability or entangle in place of this. In practice, it can look something like this. I click the ground after I use decimate to stall it, use a bladed dive to be next to my new target, press target cycle along with my entangle keybind and my next ability. As you can see, there are two hit splats on this tick. Target Cycle is a great option to use for stalling abilities on a different target, as it's easy to press the same tick as you release your ability. Along with that, Target Cycle will never force an auto, so you should never accidentally mess up your stall. To set up Target Cycle, go to the main settings menu, Combat, Targeting. Generally set the targeting mode to Radial, set the maximum distance to 9 and untick this box. Then click the Forwards Keybind button to bind this to whatever you wish to use. Target cycle forwards will target the closest monster to you, whereas backwards will target the furthest monster within your attack range, so generally forwards is always used. So getting into why you would want to stall an ability, there's a few reasons. The first reason would be to stack a lot of damage on one tick, as this will effectively allow you to use two abilities on that tick rather than one. You can also use it to release an ability with a weapon that the ability cannot normally be cast by, such as releasing a 2h ability with a dual weapon. It can also be used to manipulate an ability cooldown by using the ability on a different target. The last reason is a niche one, but you can be higher adren after using the ability than you would be if you didn't stall it. So stacking a lot of damage on one tick. Generally this means stalling ability before a fight and then using that ability on the boss as well as another ability. But this also can mean stalling ability while a boss is invulnerable and then releasing it when the boss is damageable. The first example I'm going to show of this will be Bandos. The idea with this is that you stall your hurricane on the dummy before the kill happens. So as you can see, as we've learnt, to stall your hurricane you just want to click on the ground. So my hurricane goes on cooldown there, clicking on the ground so this ability is now stalled. And then I can release the stall ability with my Vuln into my next ability, which I can do on the same tick as that, which is going to be Cleave. So if you see here, my Cleave instantly goes on cooldown there as I'm doing my hurricane animation. The second example of this is going to be Seriyu. 
Seru has crystals that heal, and damaging the crystals during the heal is generally pointless as they will heal up again. So the idea here is to storm the ability during the crystal heal and then release it after the heal has finished. So you can see here I barge the crystal, I click away and spam click the ground here as I press my cleave keybind which goes on cooldown there. I then wait until the heal has finished and then click the crystal to release my cleave into a sewer. And as you can see here, the two hits stack up very nicely after the heal has finished. So releasing ability with a weapon that normally can't cast that ability. This isn't used hugely often, but it's been used a little bit more frequently at AOD um, using a strat the same as uh, in this rot kill that I'm going to show. A very unique ability with ranges in sentry shots. Uh, this basically deals an explosion and will AOE all the targets around it. And this is a 2H only ability. But if you release this ability with chins, the incendiary shot will apply to all of the targets and will then cause more explosions so it'll basically be an AOE AOE. So the idea here is I put on my 2H, I walk out of cast distance and use my incend, it goes on cooldown there. I can then use Blear Dive freely as that won't cancel my stored ability, I'm just using it for an Adren gain. And then I can put on my chins. And when the fight starts, I can release my incendiary shot on the dummy along with the two brothers next to the dummy, which will mean my incendiary shot has now been applied to those two brothers, which will result in a big explosion as shown. Uh, an example of this would be KK. Um, this is not my video. Uh, this is a video from Lex's POV of their eight second KK. But the idea with this is that you can stall the same as with range, you can stall a 2H ability and then release it with Jeweled. So in this clip, they stall Hurricane here. You can see the Hurricane goes on cooldown, but then they release it with their Jeweled on. And this allows you to benefit from Keras procs with your Hurricane, because obviously you can't gain Keras procs when you have a 2H on. So as you can see here, they release their stalled ability and you can see the 10K there, which wouldn't be possible without a Keras proc. Next, I will be talking about stalling to manipulate ability cooldowns. Um, there aren't many cases where this is used. Um, the main one would be Magister. So for those that don't know, when killing Magister on a Slayer task, your Tusker's Wrath will act as if you are on a Slayer task and will deal 15k damage uh, and go on a two minute cooldown. But what you can do is you can attack the dummy and then use your Tusker's Wrath. And if you stall it on the dummy, and then release it on Magister. You will benefit from the 15k hit on Magister, but will only have a 15 second cooldown on Tuskers. So this allows you to use it twice in the kill. So as you can see here, I use my Tuskers, and then if we go further on, we can see here I use my second Tuskers, uh, and I was able to do that because of the short cooldown. Probably the last use of stalling, there are obviously others, but the last main one, I guess, is allowing you to be higher Adren after an ability. Here, I'm 110% Adren, I'm using the 110% uh, Adren Relic. I then store my Hurricane, so I go down to 95%. But I'm able to use Bladed Dive twice. So I use Excel Pot, and then I Bladed Dive twice, as there will obviously be no cooldown. And because Bladed Dive doesn't cancel stored abilities, it allows me to be back up to 110% Adren after I've stored my Hurricane. Lastly, I want to talk about stalling Greater Barge Bleeds. So when you stall a greater barge bleed, the first hit gets stalled like any normal ability. But the last three hits will continue to deal damage as they normally would, even if you're out of attack range. So if I barge the dummy here, and then run away, and then stall my assault, the first hit gets stalled, but the second, third and fourth hits will continue through to hit damage as you can see there. I could then release this first hit by standing next to the dummy, and then just releasing it with like a decimate. Flurry does have a weird interaction where it'll only deal half damage when you're not in MD, so be wary of that. Stalling a greater barge bleed can be used when you want to gain the damage from the bleed, but this allows you to start the boss fight a lot later, allowing for a quicker kill time. If we look at this crashing example, we do what's called a pre-barge, where we barge the dummy rather than the boss. This allows us to gain the benefit of using a barge bleed without having to actually barge the boss, meaning we can start the boss fight later. We then use Assault out of range, Bladed Dive into range, and then click target, allowing us to use our first Assault hit. The hit splats you see here are the first Assault hits, which was stalled, and the first hit of our flurry, 
but you can see from the buff bar that our Assault Bleed is still going to hit the second, third and fourth hits, meaning we can get a lot more damage in a shorter space of time. That's pretty much everything uh, in terms of stalling. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or my stream or whenever you see me. And thanks for watching.